To help you in the process of doing uh, content marketing, before you get started down that path, you probably want to first do a content audit. And a content audit is essentially an examination of all the existing content that you already have. Website, white papers, articles, videos, content shared on social media sites, everything. And you should kind of go through piece by piece and determine does that content match the strategic needs of the brand? You should figure out where that, what content helps what stage of the customer life cycle uh, and whether or not the customer's needs are actually being addressed by that piece of content um, at that particular stage. And then think about what the missing opportunities are. What piece of content do we not have that we should have to fill in the gaps in this content that we have? So here's an example of a uh, content audit, right, for a blog, right, where they went through, or a website, sorry, uh, where they went through and they actually looked at each of the different pages on the blog and they wrote a quick description of them. Uh, and then they made some notes about what sections needed to be edited, deleted, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and it's amazing how much of this, even in small websites, you can find where there's new content that needs to be added. Uh, and for your group projects, if you want to do a full content audit of the website or the digital marketing plan of an organization, I think that'd be a great idea to add into it. So there's a lot of things we could learn from publishers because content marketing, as we said, is more like publishing than it is like um, advertising, right? And a publisher really focused on the value for the reader, right? So the goal is not to, is to build a relationship based on supplying content that suits the customer's needs at that point in their life cycle, right? Uh, and as a result of this, you know, the workflow becomes very important. We need to learn from what's going on. And I have this little eye chart here just because it kind of, it's a great summary of all the different aspects that can go into content marketing, right? Uh, and kind of look at the different roles that play in, um, in the overall all development. There are also, it's important to recognize, and you can note this during the content audit, that there are really two types of content. There are stock content, which you should invest a lot of time in, make sure it's well done. This is often part of your brand style guidelines, among other things. Uh, this is content that does not change frequently, uh, but could be very expensive to create. And then you have flow content, like tweet text, for instance, stuff like that, that might have lower production value, is quickly produced, uh, but still aids in the content marketing uh, aspect of what's going on. Helping to have a, a set of labels for these things can help you determine what content you already exist and how it can be reused. You also need to think about how you're going to deliver the content, right? You can either deliver the content by creating content that is so good on your website that it attracts consumers, or you can distribute the content, right? So you can send it out to various platforms. So for instance, if you have a really amazing video and you want people to access it only through a registration wall so that you can get capture some of their information, then you might host it, right? But on the other hand, if you want to make sure that people just see the content and increase brand awareness, right? Then you might send it to YouTube and Vimeo and, and tweet about it and put it on Facebook and all those kind of things to really make sure that the content is received as much as possible. You do need to, when you're thinking about distribution, you do need to think about a couple of things, right? One is algorithmic creation, right? So YouTube, for instance, the videos that are first shown to an individual when they log on are videos that are recommended to them. So you need to think about like what kinds of videos could I create that might get recommended to the potential consumers that I'm trying to interact with, right? Uh, and so understanding the algorithms, right, spending some time on the algorithms wherever the platform they are involved in can help you understand that. You also need to understand the channel, right, because the channel has to support the message there um, or else it won't reach the target market, right? In other words, right, if, if the target market isn't paying attention to that particular channel, right, um, if they're not on that channel, right, then that's probably not a good way to go. In order to do all this, there's a number of things you should develop. You should develop a brand style guideline, which describes the tone and voice of the brand personality. You should have some visual representations of what the content is. You should create a content calendar, and I have a quick example of that down here, that actually talks about what you're going to publish when, right? So for instance, I tweet on Monday through Friday at three times a day. I post a video every Friday. I do blog posts on Tuesday and Thursday. And mapping that out ahead of time can really help you start to think about, will I create the content in the correct places at the correct times to match the customer life cycle that I want to match up with? 
Of course, part of this is also you need a workflow map. For each of those different types of content, you're gonna need some map that describes who is going to create each part of it and how it's going to uh, be authorized and approved by others. Then finally, you can take all those pieces of content and you can map them back to the persona. So you can lay the personas out on a, on a diagram, right? And then talk about which content is matching which of those personas. It can get quite complex integrating all this stuff and really thinking this through in a comprehensive method, but hopefully in the end it's worth it because you're creating content that's drawing people in and that they're then sharing with other individuals, right? Um, and you know, one thing I should mention quickly before I end this video is that the truth of the matter is, is that content marketing is not just about digital, right? But digital allows us to do so much more type, and more, more kinds of content marketing, right? We can create videos, we can create text, we can create audio, right? And it's really become, in the, in, in, in the digital era, it's really become a default way uh, to attract and, and, and encourage consumers uh, interacting with your brand, right? So even though content marketing could be talked about in an offline class, I think that this is an offline marketing class, I think this is an important aspect of digital marketing.